So, hello everybody. Um, it's been a while. I um, wanted to thank everybody that emailed me and said, where did you go? <laughs> um, I got up to uh, episode 12 and the videos were just taking so long. I didn't, my weekends were basically working, doing video editing and uh, I, I just had to stop for a while. So, uh, thanks for that. So, this is going to be a short one. I don't want to do a long drag out, you know, movie. <laughs> I want to kind of keep this short and uh, make it fun. Um, so, anyway. <coughs> I wanted to explain uh, quickly why I keep clearing my throat, which is real annoying. I've, I have this uh, post-nasal sinus allergy, allergy thing that's been going on for years. And it's, it's uh, really tiresome. Um, I'm going to see a doctor about it, but I, I, don't, I don't think they know what to do. It's, you know, so what? I'm allergic to a bunch of grasses and trees and thank you know thankfully not my dog dogs were my cats because I, I, I couldn't leave those guys behind anyway enough of that so <clears throat> so what I'm going to be uh, presenting is A humbucker that Gibson made around like 1978. It didn't have any kind of name or anything. It had a uh, PAF decal on it, but if you compare it to the real decals, it, it's just wrong. Typeface is wrong. The silk screening, you know, there's no ultraviolet light reaction when you light it up. And uh, it's just an unremarkable, mediocre guitar pickup. But you see them showing up on eBay now and then, and guys want like $5,000 for them because they think it's a real PAF. Well, nope. <laughs> so I, want, I wanted to show you one that somebody sent me, and um, he bought it from some photos from on eBay or something like that, and the photos are really vague. And I thought it was a real PAF, and then it showed up, and uh, I'll show you the uh, picture you was sent, and then close-up uh, photos of what it really is, and explain how that goes so you won't get fooled. And it's not a fake PAF. It's just something they made in the late 70s, and it in, is, in no way is anything like a real PAF. So, <clears throat> the other thing is, um, I bu built a, a full SS57 PAF replica set for the guy that sent me the uh, stainless steel PAF from his early 57 black trim Les Paul, which I cloned, and it's, it's in the early uh, video I did for that. So he uh, came back and he wanted to, he wanted a full set of it and I, I made a few adjustments. Um, I wound it a little bit hotter and um, well, we're, we're going to go into that before I demo the thing. So um, that's one of the big things um, I'm showing here. And the last thing is uh, one of my uh, YouTube fans sent me some photos of a, a collapsed ABR1 vintage bridge. And I've been telling people to try this a lot and nobody ever, nobody ever actually tried it. Uh, I told them how I thought he could fix it pretty easy. 
and it worked. So he sent me photos back of that. So if you have a collapsed bridge, it's not destroyed. It's, it's not ruined. It you know, takes about two minutes to fix it. So um, we'll go over that too. So da, 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 da. that's pretty much it. So let's get to it. I'm not dead. I'm still here. Still doing it. I'm going to try and keep these going, but not quite as often. So here we go. Thanks. Okay, so a um, little bit about this set. Um, I don't usually play uh, my replicas without covers on them, but he didn't want he didn't want to buy my covers, and he has his own. So thought I'd try them with, without the uh, covers on, and um, usually that gives you a little. It gives you a lot more trouble and maybe too much sometimes. So. Um, but it, it's pretty, uh, they handle it pretty well, so. <clears throat> These are uh, replicas of an early 1957 set that my customer uh, sent me the bridge to fix up. And by golly, that, that bridge from the earliest 57, uh, year had some ma some really uh, exciting and amazing differences that I hadn't seen in any of the uh, later PAFs, which were really um, night and day to what the first ones were. So that, that was a real gratifying uh, research dissection as I, you know, restored the thing. It, it had one dead coil, and the other coil told me pretty much um, how they were wound, what the winding pattern was. <clears throat> and the winding pattern was, the only other place I had seen that pattern was in a early um, P90s. So whether they had a, a different winder or they had champ on purpose change the winding pattern later on or what, you know, nobody can really say for sure. Um, I do think they had, there were two winders at least in, in their uh, history of P90s and actually even before that. And the Lisona 102 that came along at the very end. And uh, so those patterns were really completely different, very distinctly different. And um, those patterns do affect the sound of the, the coils. Um, and I know that from years of experience of um, doing tests on my, uh, you know, I have, I built this CNC winder um, because I was getting RSI problems from you know, hand winding, you know, <laughs> it, uh, it was really bad. I, I mean, my elbow hurt all the time. And so I built this CNC winder to take that duty over. And that was a, uh, that was a real ordeal because nobody could tell me how to make a simple CNC um, stepper motor move a wire guide like just back and forth you know at a constant speed and uh it, it was like you know it was they didn't want to talk at that low level and tell me how to do something simple so i found a guy on ebay selling a cnc uh lesson kit with a, a motor and um a driver and uh, an isolation thing for using an old PC. And uh, you can only do this with old PCs, which is good because they're really cheap. They're like $100 or so. So, 
Um, I also figured out how to do a hand winding on the CNC um, wire guide because you could write infinite lines of code and they're really, really simple. So anyway, this is the uh, earliest 57 winding pattern. Um, there are big differences in um, some of the metal parts and I won't go into that because we got winders watching these videos I do and they're looking for tidbits, you know, to give away how to do this stuff. So, nah, lips sealed. <laughs> so, um, these are also wound with a low resistance wire, fat wire. And that has a disti distinctive uh, sound of its own. It's, it's kind of a bigger and a brighter sound and it's controllable, so. So that's what these are. Um, <clears throat> so I've got the treble on the amp all the way up. So most people playing these would, would turn it down and they would, you know, kind of balance the EQ across the, the form, but uh, I like to keep everything as bright as possible so you can actually hear the, the real character and the, um, what these pickups do. And, and that's how I also demo um, real PAFs and all my demos of PAFs I've dissected and you know documented and everything. So, so here we go. Um, this, this is a uh, Les Paul elitist. Um, it doesn't stay in tune all that great. I need to put better tuners on it. So hopefully that it won't be doing that too much. Um, completely rewired harness. Um, all the hardware, you know, here, 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 and uh, this is also the uh, Four Uncles Restorations ABR-1 that I did most of the engineering on, the reverse engineering. And then the, the other guys uh, had to fine tune a lot of that stuff in building and, you know, they, uh, the alloys in this Aren't, aren't available in our time, so they had had to get everything custom mixed. So, um, I've also got the uh, new Bubble Bee replicas I'm using now. They're, um, they're they sound identical to my originals, so I'm gonna keep my lips a little tight tight on that for now, um, and they're not Lux, they're not Lux caps, and they are, they do look like original bees, except they're larger. Um, I think they're six, 600 volt like my originals are. So I'll shut up and let's go.
So we got to move on here quickly because the video is getting too long, as usual. Anyway, um, I get this email from a guy, and he sent me these two photographs, and they were real small, and both of them really blurry. And he said he had just bought this, and he wanted to know if it was a real PAF. Well, all I had were these blurry photos to go on. So I made a little bit too quick of judgment and said, yeah, looks like one to me and you got a great deal. So, and then it shows up and it looks like this. It's not a PAF. And in fact, the cover is chrome, but in the photograph, it looks nickel. So uh, I said, I wrote him back and I said, this isn't a PAF and it's, Sorry, I apologize. And he said, fine, you know, use it to uh, show it on a video. So you're looking at it, and the uh, PAF decal is all scratched up. And in the original photo, it's so blurry, you couldn't tell what it was. But it's uh, the typeface is wrong. There's, there's all this clear... Um, area around the de the black part which is you never see that in real PAF uh, decals the uh, bobbin mount screws are too big like they're number three and then uh, the cover um, it's uh, it's chrome and then if you uh, look at here look here at the uh, a real PAF cover that I have they're not even close so he got fooled, and uh, I made a mistake. But anyway, and then uh, there's the uh, tool marks on the feet. And um, you can see here that uh, that's definitely not, not what they call a L tool mark. It's just a smash and grab part of the machinery that stamped itself into the, into the feet there. So what these are, they are late 1970s, like 1978, generic humbuckers. They're, they have no name. They're mediocre sound. They're not worth hardly anything. But you see guys trying to sell them on uh, eBay for $5,000 a set. So don't get fooled and don't make a judgment off a blurry photograph somebody sent you to sell it to you and then pretend they don't know what it is so that's that so let's move on here quickly these photos are courtesy of Scott Juarez who's a customer of mine who ordered uh, a, uh, one of our ABR1 replicas um, for our little group called Four Uncles Restorations and uh, he'll be getting his in a couple weeks. And uh, he happened to mention that he had a vintage ABR one that he couldn't use because it had sagged. Or, you know, they say, well, it collapsed. Well, they don't collapse. So he, he said it was kind of unplayable. And then I, I told him, you know, that stuff is a, it's a zinc alloy, and zinc is a very soft metal. And uh, in fact, the uh, modern ABR ones uh, don't use that same alloy. They use a harder version, and that's why they sound so bad. <clears throat> and I said, you know, I've been telling people that, you know, I could fix one of those because all you have to do is uh, put it in a vise with a block of wood and um, you know a big vise and uh, crank down on it and flatten it back out and uh, you know nobody ever did it so he uh, has a little machine shop from what I gather 
It has a machinist vise. Took a block of wood, and uh, the vise jaws are completely flat, and uh, not no teeth or anything. And he he did what I said, cranked it down, and fixed it like in two minutes. So he sent me photographs of that. So if you have a collapsed or destroyed uh, ABR1 casting, it's simple to fix them. And here's proof for you. So here's a couple photographs of it uh, on his machinist scale showing how much it had sagged and then showing it in the vise and then showing the vise being cranked down and uh, that sag is just vanished. So don't throw them away. Fix them. Get somebody who's got a machinist vice. Anyway, that's the end of this video. And uh, we'll see you about the next one. These things are like a lot of work. But if I have enough spare time, I, I do them. But um, I really burned out after 12. So this is it. This is the end of episode 13. And uh, stay tuned.